Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here, and today we're gonna be doing an unhaul. I have never done one of these before. This is my first unhaul on my channel. So my collection that you see behind me um, is very curated and it's not every single book that I've ever read, but these are books that really reflect my current reading tastes are the ones that you see behind me. And then, you know, as time goes on, my readings chased, tastes change and I move on from things. And I try to only keep books that I love um, and I want to be reflective of my reading tastes. So this is a collection of books that I've been collecting for over a year at this point. So it's just time to get rid of some books um, that are just not hitting my taste anymore. You know, it's just not as reflective. I've grown up, gotten older. I've read a lot more adult and a lot of this is young adults. Or these are just books that I read and I didn't love. So no shade, no shade, no tea. But these books just didn't work for me. That rhymed. How embarrassing. Let's just get into it and I'll just talk about each book pretty quickly. So the first book I have here is The Book of Mordred by Vivian Vandeveld. And Vivian Vandeveld is an author that my best friend adores, but even she has said that this is probably her worst. So it's my bad for trying to start with this author here. This is Mordred is a character from the Arthurian legend. He is the son of King Arthur and is a villain. So this is a retelling of Mordred the character through the eyes of three women in his life. So it's from their perspective. And I read part one of this story and I was incredibly bored. <laughs> this is incredibly dry writing. I didn't connect to these characters. Mordred is supposed to be a villain, but he's a hero in this story, and so I just wasn't buying it. And after part one, I was like, does it get any better to my friend? And they said, no. <laughs> so I have had this for over a year at this point. I'm not going to continue. It's time to let it go. Oh boy. <sighs> Stephen King's On Writing. This was a gift to me by an ex-coworker who I was friends with, but then I realized we were, how should I put this? Um, we had a lot of politically different opinions. opinions. And I distanced myself from that friendship fairly quickly after my realization that they were not a great person. Um, and then they left the company eventually. So, but before that, they gave me this book because we were writers, we bonded over writing. Um, and to be honest, I'm never going to read this. I do not care what Stephen King has to say about the writing process. I am a Stephen King hater. I have no interest in his thoughts and opinions. Uh, he's very successful, good for him, but he's, he's just an old white guy and I don't really need to hear what he has to say. That's it. So maybe a little tea, a little shade there. This one is gonna kind of hurt and I understand, but I really didn't like The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I gave this one star, like I really, really didn't like this. Is it beautifully written? Yes, it is. Um, I have attempted this book four times and I couldn't get past the first hundred pages each of the times and finally was able to listen to it on audiobook and just finally finish it and I didn't didn't care didn't care this is a sci-fi story about this person who goes to an alien planet and they don't have gender on that planet I just think this is outdated in terms of its gender discussions and this doesn't really have much of a plot. So I wasn't enjoying the characters, I wasn't enjoying the plot, I didn't enjoy the themes and how they were dissected necessarily. I know my friend really loves this though, so I might gift this copy to her because I really like this copy, it's a masterworks, um, but it just really 
didn't work for me. The next one is like opposite side of the spectrum. It's uh, If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. And I bought this on a whim and I read the first, I want to say 50, 60 pages and it just really didn't grip me. This is a Cinderella retelling where we have a fat protagonist who designs her own shoes. She's a fashion designer for shoes. Um, and she joins a reality TV show with her two stepsisters. And it's kind of like Bachelor-esque. Um, it, it just, it's just supposed to be kind of a fun rom-com and I just didn't connect to the characters and I ended up putting the book down and I've never wanted to pick it back up again to see like how it ends. So, you know, I, and I've had this for nine months a year almost and you know someone else can get enjoyment on this i'm sure you know the representation would be great for somebody you know what i mean just wasn't for me and then the last book that i'm for sure unhauling is the doors of eden by adrian tchaikovsky this is um adrian tchaikovsky wrote one of my favorite books uh children of time and so i've been trying to read more by him and nothing else is working <laughs> which is really depressing and really frustrating. This is about, I don't even want to tell you what it's about because the synopsis is so different from what this book actually ends up being. But it starts off with these two women who are in a relationship together and they're on the moors of England and they fall into another world and one of them ends up getting trapped there and the other one is able to return. But this turns into like big cons government conspiracies. There's all sorts of different perspectives. There's you get perspectives from the villains who are after this these people. And this tried so desperately to be an action movie, even though it's 600 pages long. So there's so much action happening, but then there's like super heavy sci-fi discussions happening in here as well that I was like this would honestly be better if you like kind of kept the sci-fi to a minimum or like didn't explain it and just said this is what's happening and wrote it like it was an action movie because then it would move along quicker. I read 50% of this book so I was like in here and I just the only character I cared about was the gay couple and we weren't even getting much of them. It was mostly about the other, it was like the Secret Service agent and the villains. So it just, with the shifting perspectives and the explanation, like I even liked the sci-fi, but it this book didn't know what it wanted to be. It, it really wanted to be an action movie and it should have been a manuscript for an action movie, in my opinion. So this one is going bye-bye. Now these next couple I'm on the fence about, so you'll have to convince me one way or the other. The first one is the entire Truth Witch series by Susan Dennard. This is a young adult fantasy, epic fantasy series that's gonna be many, many books long and I've read four and a half of the books I got, you know, 30% into the latest installment and I was just incredibly bored and the installment before that Blood Witch I really didn't even enjoy that much so I was already kind of losing interest in the series hoping that the newest book would kind of rekindle my love for it but it just fell flat for me um, and the reason I loved this story so much is because about it was about the female friendships in here it was really about two women being friends and then they're at the end of this book separated and they're trying to find their way back to each other and it's like book five and we're still not there yet and so yeah I don't know I have I kind of have nostalgia for this now though like book one and two were so good that I really really love them but the latest installments have been really disappointing to me so I'm really on the fence about this series so let me know should I continue I don't know I don't know is there a point to keeping it if I'm not going to continue all 
All right, the, in a similar vein, we have the six books in the falling, fallen, falling? In the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. This is just another uh, young adult fantasy story that I binge read the first four books uh, right in a row. It was like candy. It was like candy. And then we had to wait for book five and six. And by the time that five and six came out, I was just kind of I lost interest in the series as a whole. Um, this is about three warring kingdoms. Well, not, they're, at the beginning, they're not warring, but one is very wealthy. One is basically enslaved by the other for resources. And the third is like a desolate wasteland that is even more desperate. And so they, you know, are fighting for, you know, survival um, against the wealthy kingdom. And there's like a uh, love octagon in here. There's magic. It's, it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, but I think, I don't know if I'm ever gonna, because at this point I'd have to reread books one through four and then continue with five and six. And I don't know if I'm in that place anymore, if that makes sense. So it's not a bad series. I just don't know if I'm ever gonna complete it. And again, why keep it if I don't know if I'll finish? The series and then love it you know what I mean like the I only want to keep books that I love so the last one I am having a hard time deciding um and that is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell and I haven't even read this but the reason I'm attached to it is because one it's signed by the author and I actually won this in a Twitter giveaway Here's the signature. So the author, I was following the author because I was really excited for this book when it came out. Um, followed the author, thought she was really cool. She put out a thread that was like, hey, I'm doing a giveaway and I won. And so I was actually private messaging the author a little bit back and forth. And she just seemed like a really lovely person. <laughs> but at this point, it's been three, four years since I, since I got this book. Um, and it, again, it's another young adult fantasy series. It's set in New York. There's time travel. Will I ever pick it up? I don't know if I'm, I never look at this and think, oh, that's what I want to read. I'm just not in that place anymore, but I feel bad about winning a book in a giveaway <laughs> that I'm not gonna read. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these books that I talked about. Do you give away books that you're not enjoying? What are your thoughts on my um on the fence books? <laughs> I would love to know. I need some encouragement one way or the other. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye.